How are you doing? It's Lee Addison here, the lounge room analyst, and uh, we're going to continue to focus on Super League. And this week, I'm going to look at Leeds Rhinos, who unfortunately had to uh, find a new coach this week because our friend Richard Agar decided to step down. A man full of integrity, a man full of coaching talent, and a man full of the right intentions. So all the best to Richard. Um, sorry to see what's happened, and uh, all the best to Leeds because you're a great club, and Super League needs you to be to be going well. Um, before I go into that, just to let you all know, I'll be in England at the end of April, the last week, holding a clinic at Portico Panthers over on the St. Helens Warrington side of, of the Pennines. And that is on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in the last week of April. I can't remember the dates at the top of my head, but I'll be joined by Vinnie Webb, the former head of rugby league coaching in England, and also Chris Ratcliffe, the current Wigan Warriors women's coach. So a uh, high profile coaching team there. Please get in touch if you want to join us on that clinic. Now, the other thing for Australian viewers is we're going to look at the Melbourne Storm. There's a couple of reasons I've decided not to do that right now, and I, and I, and I extend my apologies. Number one, the NRL um, are quite finicky about their rights, and as you know, I'm involved with the Queensland League scene as well. And there's a few issues, technical, that we've got to get around there just to make sure that nobody gets upset about anything. Number two, um, the I'm doing the previews of the season with Big Les's League podcast at the minute, so I didn't want sort of cross-pollination there. So bear with me and we will look at Melbourne in, in the coming weeks. So as I said, Leeds, um, this week they've appointed Jane, Jamie Jones Buchanan as interim coach. And as you see this, there's no doubt he's changed some of these things. But uh, in the first few minutes of the game, I saw so many things that Leeds can do better. And we're going to go through it now with a fine tooth comb. Okay, hope you can see the, the screen. Okay, Leeds are carrying out the football from the first kickoff. I'm a big believer in strength training, obviously, and straight away, looking at the collision there and the nature of the, of the collision, the way he went into the collision, this player, but also strength levels, I'm a bit concerned there. And even though we're looking at Leeds, I want you to have a look at Salford, the way they went into that collision. They put numbers in the tackle, and they're actually uh, tackling as opposed to going into catch. Even though they tackle rather than going to catch, they can still catch and control their opposite number. So this is in stark contrast to what you'll see from Leeds very soon. So obviously I'm worried about strength levels there. I'm worried about leg drive ability. But we'll have a look at this next carry. You've heard me talk about this before. When you run overs lines at, at the ruck like that, you really open yourself up to allow the opposition to get their shoulder in under your armpits, under your ribs, and really get some control. And this is negligible go forward from Leeds. So I'm going, to look, I'm going to look at the two clips again. There's the first carry. He gets totally dominated. This carry comes from behind the rook and overs, sort of like a C and D defender, and it's negligible go forward. And the other part of this set too it is totally directed to the middle of the field. You've got the same thing there from the next carry. So, overs line here. Watch the next carry. It's very tight to the rook. When you go tight to the rook, sometimes the markers can tackle you. Remember, the markers are two men that the game allows to be offside. And if you get tackled by them, then you're not really in the meters game, are you? That's a bit better, a bit more direct. And it's no coincidence that there's a bit more go forward there unless players involved in the tackle. That's a little bit wider, a bit more go forward. So we've seen two types of carry in the first four tackles, but because of the negligible go forward, the negligible metres, the kick is under pressure. Now, in this good ball set, you're going to see two examples of how leads can be poor and good at the same time. Now, I would have thought this is rugby league basics. As you can see here, leads are broken from the scrum. The Salford defence is right in their face. The golden rule is don't pass along close to the line. And if you do, you sort of have to float it over the top, basically, or really uh, needle it through. What happens here is it floats the ball over the top, and it's very easy for the Salford defence to deal with. The defence is in their face. They would have been far better just sending somebody in to put a dent in the Salford line. It was a messy scrum. And they just achieved absolutely nothing with that play. In fact, they may have even lost metres. They get controlled very well 
in the rook. Now, here again, to me, this is basics. They're trying to get back to the middle of the field quite clearly. I admire that and I understand it. But you want to put a dent in the Salford line. You want them going backwards. Otherwise, they're going to be in your face. Look at the lack of meters made. They have basically gone minus one meter with that play. Now, maybe it's a ploy. Maybe, maybe they wanted to drag Salford out, right? Well, guess what? It didn't work because they didn't win the game. Yes, there's a bit of a play on here now, and there's some shape, and almost you've seen a stark contrast to what you saw on the other side. It ended up being a double movement, so it wasn't giving us a try. However, let's look at the difference. There's shape, there's movement around the play of the ball. The hooker told some lies by dummying one way and going the other. It's not clear to the Salford defence where leads are going. People are moving off the ball, and because of the option run here, because his hips are square at the line, they've managed to create the overlap or gap situation. And it's good football. In one set, you've seen a poor side of the field and a good side of the field. And there couldn't have been a bigger contrast in the way they did things. And one of the ways worked and one of them didn't. Now let's look at their defence. Negl negligible collision, negligible rook control. But everything's in control here. That's better collision. However, this worries me here how the player lost his feet. Once you lose your feet, you lose all power in the tackle, basically, and you become a dead marine. Players should be encouraged to stay on the studs on their studs as long as they can so that they've got control over the defensive collision. He lost his studs there quite quickly, and therefore he was a passenger in that tackle. Anyway, the rook's quite good. Now we start to see some problems. Because he was a passenger, he was laid up. He's now not up at A defender. That's your A defender, that's your B defender, that's your C defender. Salford have got masses of room to penetrate the defensive line there. What they've also got now leads to a situation where the players are starting to turn in on the edge because they've lost some control around the middle of the rook here. Only subtle loss of control, but enough all the same. And now look at that. Salford are now generating some momentum. All because collisions and rook control aren't a priority. Now this rook is starting to become a real mess. I would still say that Leeds are defending roughly the middle of the field. I would say they're probably a man short there. But because of the poor rook, because of the poor unload, they are rushing to get into position. A defender's back, B defender's ahead of A defender. And now to deal with this situation, all they have to do is hold the defensive line here and move over and slide. Instead, the two-in defender rushes out he gets beaten with the ball, and Salford end up making a half break. Now, the tackle went into touch, so the commentators called it good Leeds defence. Now, was it good defence? Or did one player just manage to rescue the situation? Now, just in those three clips there, I've seen so much wrong with Leeds. The forwards haven't got a clear direction of how to run and where to run. The way they're running isn't conducive to getting goal forward. When they change it, they get good goal forward. It's almost like they have two types of set in exit and two types of set in good ball because in tackle three and tackle four on exit, their runs were better. They were a bit wider of the rook, a bit more direct. But they are very readable just going down the middle of the field. There wasn't a great deal of push around the play of the ball. It was very easy to see where they were going. And that's why the kicker struggled to get his kick away. And then we're in good ball. I don't know if you remember, but the first two tackles that went wide to the right, the defence were right on top of them and they're trying to play the ball sideways. That's not how to generate goal forward. That's not how to put a, a dent in the defensive line. But once they did get back to the middle with some shape, with some decoy running, with some options, with some hip square, uh, having, a, having a look at the defensive line and engaging the defensive line, they actually made some quite easy inroads. I think Leeds are about that close from turning their season around based on some of the things I've seen. They've got to do more of what they did in tackle three and four of each set rather than one and two. Defensively, They've got to do more of what they did in one and two, which was collision, good rook control, good ABC, and then they lost it in tackle three and four and started to panic. And I think these are the mentality issues, mentality issues that a struggling team can have when they're not too sure of their role, not too sure of what their job is at any given time, and not too sure what brings them success and what doesn't. And I think that's probably the problem with Leeds at the minute. I don't think it's going to take much fixing if, if a quality coach 
uh, gets in and, re- and, 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 and gets hold of them. Um, Richard Aigar, I think there's certainly evidence there that the, you could see what they were trying to do, but maybe something in the way that they were teaching them in the preseason, it's just not quite embedded in. He'll find the answers. He's a good bloke and a good coach. All the best. See you in England soon. I'll see you next week for more Super League analysis. See ya.